In this video, we're gonna see how we can take a gem patch and export that to Rainbow, export that as C++, and load it into Highs as a DLL. So once again, I'm on a Mac here with the full version of Max with the optional Rainbow extension, which is a paid upgrade. But if you have a full license of Max, you have Gen with it. So Gen is actually a free part of the Max full license. But to complete this entire procedure, you will need a version of Rainbow. Okay, so let's visit the help menu in the Max drop-down menu. We're gonna to go to examples and into Gen, where we can see lots of Gen examples from Cycling74. Gen is arguably the most exciting part of Max because it allows us to do some interesting DSP. We can do single sample processing and make lots of interesting filters and effects units. So let's open up the Dorotto Reverb, which is one of the examples from Gen. This is a little basic reverb patch. So let's switch on our DSP, run our audio example, and then we'll just pull up our live gain and we'll hear a little reverb. So we can control the dry wet parameter and things like the decay, damping, etc. So we're gonna port this over to Rainbow and then port that into C++ for highs. So here we are back in Max. So there's a few gotchas to do this. In my rabbit hole of diving through this and doing lots of gen stuff into highs, there's a few gotchas and there's some good practice about parameter management. So the first thing we're gonna do is come back to a blank patcher in Max and we're gonna save this document. So we're gonna visit the file menu and choose save as. We're gonna save this into a location or desktop. We're gonna make a subfolder and call it verb. Now we're gonna save into that folder our top level Max patch. So we'll call that verb and this is the Max pat or the Max patcher. So now we've got that, we can come back to our example from our next window here. And all we've got to do is unlock the padlock to get access to the gen example, copy everything to the buffer, and paste it into our example. So now we've got everything from the gen reverb in our patch, and let's save our own patch again. So next up is to make ourselves a little rainbow sub patcher. So let's press N for new, and we'll type in RNBO. We're gonna have the tilde at the end to represent an audio object. So let's put a bit of white space and we're gonna call our object verb. So we're giving our rainbow patch a name. Now you can see this opens the window, but it hasn't taken the file dependency properly. The window's still called untitled. So let's save our rainbow patch next to our max patch. So again, I'm calling it verb, but this is the rainbow patch. Now you can see we have to close the rainbow patch, resave the max patch, close the max patch and reopen him to be able to get the file dependencies working. If we enter the rainbow patch, we've got here the verb. So there's our first step to ensure file dependencies. Let's click on the pencil icon in the bottom left-hand corner of the patcher and we'll unlock the patch with the padlock tool. Now we need to make some audio inputs into rainbow. So let's press N for new and type in in tilde space one. So we've got an inlet for audio with the first argument as one to represent the first input. We can copy and paste this object by option all dragging, but we always need to make sure the arguments are running sequentially and unique. So now we've got in two, which will represent a left and right channel input into our patch. Let's make the outputs, n for new, type out tilde space one, and then we can copy that, change the argument in the copy to two, and now we've got a proper stereo in and out patch. So that's our beginning basis. The next thing we need to do is come back to our main max patcher, make sure the patch is unlocked, select the gen sub patcher, copy it, come back into our rainbow sub patcher and paste it. So we've now got the DSP guts of the reverb inside our rainbow patch. If we lock the patch, we can double click on the gen patcher and we'll see the guts for the reverb. So inside here, there's quite a lot of nested sub patches. For example, over here at the top, this is the early reflections with all pass filters. Down here, we've got the late reflections from the tank, so to speak. So we don't have to worry too much about how this works. But the important thing here is the use of parameter names. So we can see here, Gen uses a system by having an object called param, which will then allow us to define the parameter name in terms of the user interface, 
with an initial default value and numerical range for that parameter. So we have at min, zero, at max one, etc. So this is how Gen accesses parameters from the top level max patcher. Luckily, Rainbow uses a really similar system. So what we can do now is unlock our patch, select every object in the Gen patch that has the param objects. So we can shift click to grab all of these param objects and then copy and paste them into our top level rainbow patch. So we'll unlock the rainbow patcher and paste them in. So we've got a bit of a mess here, but we can now customize this window and configure everything as we need. Probably a good idea now to save our top level rainbow patcher and to save our top level max patch, just to make sure our folder dependencies are happy. So let's come back into Rainbow. What we've got to do now is configure these new objects we pasted to work within our sort of hierarchy system to pass the parameters up from Gen to Rainbow and up to the top level of Max for the UI. This is important for our compilation to make sure we have suitable parameters labeled when we export to highs. So what we can do with Rainbow is make a new object, N for new. We'll type in set param. This is the object we use. We then specify the argument to be the same parameter names that we copied over from Gen. So in this example, pre-delay, and make sure you've got no typos, otherwise it will throw an error. So we've now got an object that we can take the parameter from the top level user interface, route it through with a appropriate object here, set param, and pass it into Gen. So we've now got to configure all of these objects we stole earlier, and add a set param object for each one. There's a quick way to do this. You can copy the set param, grab just the variable that represents a parameter name, paste it in, connect it up, and we can shift click the patch to make multiple patches at once. So that will take some time, and once it's done, we're almost ready to compile. So as we can now see, we've got all of our set params configured and patched into the first in the, in the gen object, and each of the different arguments or variable names here for each set param is distinct and unique based across the parameter names from the gen example. Finally, we need to patch and route our audio. So we can take the output from the gen patcher, the first outlet for the left channel, the second outlet for the right. Now this particular reverb is only really mono, so we're gonna cheat and sum the left and right inputs into the reverb. If we wanted to, we could copy this and make a second left and right channel but by the nature of this reverb, it's only mono in stereo out. Okay, so once we've done this, let's save up our patch and we can move forward to double checking it's working appropriately inside the top level max patcher. So this is gonna involve unlocking the patch and making various at tree objects, which are different objects here for inspector attributes. So we can wire this into the left input lock the patch, and in the drop-down menu that appears inside, we can see the parameters we labeled. Quick way to do this, you can unlock the patch, press A, you can see you can make one just by using the key command A on the Mac, or alternatively, you can copy and paste these, but you would need to wire them all in. So if we take the first outlet of Rainbow, hold Shift, make a cable, you can quickly scoop down multiple different outlets here. We can see we can even then use the pre-existing variable names we saw earlier, or we can lock the patch and actually pull up from the drop down menu. So once this is all configured, we can then bust our audio in and double check the system is working okay. Okay, so now we can root audio from our playback object. We can hack the outputs here and just repatch to the rainbow object. And we'll have a stereo output with a mono input. Let's run our example audio, give it a bit more gain. And now we've got a working reverb. Awesome. So next stage is going to involve exporting the rainbow code inside the rainbow sub patcher. So as before, we're simply going to navigate to the right hand side of the toolbar and open up our export sidebar. We're then going to select at the top here the C++ source code export and click the magic button. Inside here, as before, we need to make sure we follow the conventions that Christoph defined in his GitHub post. We're going to use the export name verb. We're going to make sure our class name is the same. 
We're going to switch off any polyphony in Rainbow so Heist can handle it if it needs it. And we're going to point a directory where we're going to export the code. So once again, I'm going to come back to my verb folder here, make a new folder, C++, just to keep it a bit neater, and move into that folder for the export. Now we can click the export button in the bottom right-hand corner of the sidebar, and Rainbow will do its stuff. So there we go, we have managed to export our code. Let's come back to our desktop and we'll be able to find our code is sitting here in our Rainbow export. Let's move over to our Rainbow project example we've been running in highs. We're gonna to come to our DSP Nextworks folder, third party. As the previous video, we need to make a new folder, src lowercase for source, and simply copy and paste that source code into that folder. Now we can actually come back to launch highs and test our code. So here we are in highs. As before, we visit the tools drop down menu and choose create C++ template for rainbow patch. If the dialog opens up, we can see our verb is available in the list because we copied the source code to the folder. Once again, be aware about your channel count, get your channels configured correctly. Let's press OK and we'll then be given the chance to compile the DLL in highs. So we'll visit the export menu and select compile DSP network as DLL. We'll have to create a little script effect again. I seems to need that. We can see we have our verb ready as a node to compile. If we click OK, that's going to launch our bash script to run the producer and compile down our reverb code. So this may take a few minutes. So we can see the process is completed. We've had a few warnings on the way, but it's worked. So let's quit terminal. We have to restart highs to reload in our compiled DLL. So back into highs now, and we can reload our project. And simply in the module tree, we can make a new hard coded master effect. And inside there, select the verb as our network. So now we have a reverb from Rainbow in highs. Nice.